Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. I'm Eniola Maffe. I am the lead for 2030 Vision on Technology and Sustainable Development at the World Economic Forum. And I have the distinct pleasure of moderating this session on an idea and insight with Marianne Croak and Lindiwe Matladi. This dialogue is between two inspirational women, founders, innovators, where they reveal new models of thinking that challenge our traditional mindsets and our approaches. And it's no better time than this. So in addition to the human and the health toll, the unprecedented impact of COVID-19 on all aspects reminds us that business as usual just simply isn't an option. And there isn't there, there are need for us to tackle some of the issues with the pandemic and the longer term social and e economic and environmental challenges as well. And here's an opportunity for technology. The fourth industrial revolution technologies can play a major role here. And a report that we recently launched in January of 2020 identified that 70% of the 169 targets of the sustainable development goals could actually be enabled and achieved by our existing technologies. So this is a unique opportunity to build back smarter, better and stronger and more inclusive using the full breadth of expertise and um, opportunities and different perspectives that innovators such as Marianne and Lindy Wei possess. So at this point, I want to introduce our phenomenal speakers. Um, Marianne Croak is Vice President of Engineering at Google and also Vice President of Site Reliability at YouTube. And most notably, part of the reason why we're here, um, she's credited with developing the voice over IP. So that is any conversation we're having here is thanks to her, so thank you and Lindiwe Matladi. She's Chief Executive Officer at African Teen Geeks and also a recent recipient of the Schwab Foundation 2020 Award. So at this point, I want to welcome my wonderful speakers who I've had the pleasure of introducing. And I want to start with one particular question that I think is, is really on our minds around the opportunity that we see. I'll start with you, Marianne. What is the biggest opportunity you see for change in our post-pandemic world? Um, well, thank you so much for that lovely introduction. And I'm very grateful for you to host this and for me to be here with Lindy Way. Um, probably the most significant thing that I see that will cause things to change, as we all hope that they will, is the fact that we have this increased awareness of the inequities in the world. Um, I think COVID has made that abundantly clear for people. We've had much more time to reflect and we've been given insights that normally in our very busy, distractive lives, we would not have. So I think if we can zero in on, on that gift almost, right, that gift that we've been given to see what the what the world is truly like and where the gaps are needed in the world, I think it would be so beneficial to address that, that huge amount of inequity. And I know, just a follow on question for your, um, to this point, um, I know that Lindiwe has dropped off and we've lost connection with her, but yeah. I wanted to call back to what you had mentioned around the history and the context of this and why it's so important yes. that we think about those um, from a historical context to bring us and learn from those um, from that to be able to kind of start thinking about the future and those opportunities. Yeah, yeah. you know, if you if you look at the the history of innovation in the world, it often comes in in burst, right? There's like scientific re revolutions where people just have these amazing paradigm shifts, and then there's all this new invention around it. And and the most interesting thing is that it typically happened um, at periods of desperation and, and periods of great turmoil where it's clear that no one wants to change. I mean, no one wants things to stay the way 
that they are, and everyone is very motivated for something new and something that will um, alleviate all the all the chaos, I would say, and and dissatisfaction. And so, even though it's a it's a quite a painful time for the world, the fact that it's global, the fact that we're all in this, I think is is will be a stimulus um, for us to move ahead in a very invigorating way, I would say, because we'll be highly motivated to do so. And I know even in my own personal life, most of what I've done that I feel that has been significant in terms of its impact on others is typically during times of stress and difficulty for me. So even though, as, as I said, you know, we lament that this is a, is a horrible time in history, I think we can benefit from it as well. And I think we will see that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really fascinated by the, by the work that's been done even in vaccinations and how quickly that has been accomplished. And I'm sure there's many more things to come. We'll never want to experience this again. And I think in, in terms of we've talked about this around the, the opportunity and what could we see as being one of those levers that could be able to do that. You mentioned the vaccine and, and, and um, great strides that have been uh, taken even over the past couple of weeks. And everyone's with bated breath of, of when there's an opportunity to, to, um, to, to really delve into this new normal in, in ways that allow for greater mobility and, and connection, right? Um, yes. And you've done that in your, in, in your work and in technology. You've created literally a connection point um, through voice over IP. And are there some things you've learned from, from inventing? You are the holder of about 200 patents from what I understand. Um, and learning through failing and learning through research and development and decision making. Are there some things that you can draw from your experience that would be valuable to those who are even listening today and thinking about joining this quest to kind of frame the future better? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Thank you so much. Um, what I would say to that is almost all my inventions stemmed from failure. Um, and it could be the case that it was a failure of, of like what just happened to Lindu Wei in, in terms of dropping off. You know, we can think of ways where we could maybe automatically through um, the network connect her back in. Um, so it's like you, you have to have this mindset when you look at problems in the world that they are solvable, right? And all they're waiting for is for so, someone to come along and fix that and realize that you just don't have to be a victim of trouble and problems that you can actually rise above them and fix them. And then on, in the journey to fix them, right? It also involves a lot of failure. It's, it's not the case that typically, I, I, I don't know of any case, but I'm sure it must exist where it's like love at first sight. You know, it's like, no, things evolve and you have to keep experimenting and perfecting things. Um, you know, when voice over IP first came into being, it was a total failure. And many, many people believed that putting voice over the internet was, was ridiculous. And it would be, it was like a toy. Um, and, and there were many, many skeptics and they were right. They were right for that time, they were right. But with a lot of work and a lot, you know, a lot of testing, a lot of experimentation, you see what we've accomplished today. Um, and it's very ubiquitous and it's in wide use. And, and thank goodness that, you know, people had the fortitude to keep going despite it seeming to be impossible and kind of a silly venture to go, a path to go down. So, you know, I'm sure from today's viewpoint, it looks like, you know, we're in a, in, in the state of, of where we are and we'll be here and, you know, we'll just keep waiting for something to change. And we don't, we don't realize how much power we have to make that change come to be. And I, I, I just think we have to believe and realize that Inventors are just humans and they're very much like us. And anyone can have, you know, an innovative idea, 
um, and we have to share those ideas, collaborate with each other so that they can be realized. It's, it's not something that, that inventors are very esoteric people that you find in history books and that are odd and strange. They're just everyday common people, truly. Thank you so much for that, and especially the uh, the failing forward um, concept. But you know, inventors are getting younger and younger these days. You probably at Google, you probably see um, those who are creating and and um, you know who are under the age of thirty. And much of the world and those who we're speaking to today um, may be very young um, and trying to make sense of the world, but also shape the world in the future. And I know with our conversation with Lynn Dewey as well was, she works very much with young people, with the skills, provide with the skills and the opportunities to be able to shape the future, to disrupt it, to be inspirational, to use all of those energies towards that. Um, and also as a, as a woman, um, uh, Marianne, you are, have mentioned before about the unique perspective of coming in as an outsider um, and into the space um, for technology. And I, I guess my question is, what do you believe would be some of the qualities that women and women of color um, have to bring to tech and innovation, especially in these times where it's very uncertain um, and they may be uniquely placed to address these challenges. And I know I'll also bring in Lynn Dewey to that question as well about the unique place for women and women of color all over the world to, yeah. um, to be part of this. Yes, before we um, discuss that, I, I'd like to go back to what you first said about children, right? And I, I find, and I, I want anyone who's young to realize that children have like a very, very rich imaginations and that's what you need to have for invention is, is almost to be childlike in your understanding of the world, which is a little naive, but also not inhibited by what's possible. Um, I, I love working with children because they're so creative and they, they're just bursting with new ideas. And Linda Way, I think, you know, in, in the work that you do, it's so inspiring because I do believe that that the technologies and the innovations that we will see 10, 20 years from now are stemming from the very minds that you're working with. Can you talk a little bit about your work? Yeah, um, I mean, for me, I actually agree with you because I love working with children for exactly the same reason, because when they are passionate, but they also still hopeful about the future and they don't, uh, you know, look at things as this may not work. For them, everything is possible. And um, with the work that we've done with the kids, I mean, a lot of the children, you know, I want to be a waitress, I want to be a driver, because that's what they've seen. But at the end of the project, when you've started showing them what is possible, you know, start asking them at the end of the program, what do you want to become? Then they tell you, I want to be an innovator. I want to build the Facebook, the next Google. And that's really what you want the kids to have that, um, that imagination and the passion for them to be able to achieve their dreams. Imagination, yeah. passion, and energy, and bringing that to especially what, what we need now. Um, thank you. And yeah, so, oh, sorry, I, I was going to address your, your, the last part of your statement about what, you know, with, with women and, and particularly women of color, it, often we say we want a seat at the table, we want to fit in, we want to be part of, of whatever is we see as significant. And many times I have felt, you know, it's really to our advantage that we don't fit in, that we don't have that seat at the table, even though we may be sitting at the table, we may, we may not be, we're never going to be, you know, part of the club in the way that someone who looks exactly like the other members of that club will be. But that, to me, again, is, is often a benefit because it allows us to step back and really be able to observe in a, a quite an objective way as to where the gaps are and what's needed for change. If you're very um, included and, and, and made to feel like you're part of a group, a lot of times that 
kind of spoils your perspective because there's this temptation to think like the group and to conform to the group. Whereas invention and innovation requires you to think out of the box, to be unique, to, to be different. And just by our very nature um, and the way that society has constructed things, we are different. Linda, we, have you in, encountered that in your life as well? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, even now with a lot of the work that I've done, you would think that, you know, when I walk in the room, the assumption would be she knows what she's doing. But I still have to sell myself all, all the time, you know, my qualification that I'm educated. But for me, it's also if you think about the work that you have done, Marianne, um, you know, being the reason that we're having this session today is because of the innovations of the work that you have done. If, if you think about it, in during the the pandemic, business was gonna stop if it wasn't because of everything that you have done over the years. So you would think that with somebody like you sitting where you are as a woman of color, it will be easy for someone like me to walk in because now there's there's somebody who's 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 paved the way. So instead of assuming I can't do it, like you know, there's a person who's already done it, but it's not like that. And so we still have to fight to be included. We still have to prove, you know, I, I, I was telling my kids that sometimes some people they walk in and they're assumed to be competent. But for if you are a black and you are a woman, you have to prove that, it, you know, it's not always your degree. It's not even always a, how well you've done at school. But uh, for me, I really feel like moving forward, they, they, there are ways in which we can change that. But I also feel like making sure that people like yourself are visible and the work that you have done, you know, you get the credits that you deserve, it will make it, uh, hopefully, will eventually make it easy for somebody like me. If I say, you know what, my role model is Marianne, hopefully just mentioning your name would be like, oh, she must be good if she looks up to Marianne, you know? Yeah, yes. I mean, I think probably many people like you and I have been a bit in a position where we're the only one of our kind or we have that, you know, very unique identity. And it's not the most comfortable feeling in the world, but I do agree with you that if we can serve others by the position that we're in and open the door for others, then it's, it's, a, it's a benefit. And, you know, it's fine and stressful, I guess, to be the only one, but you don't want to remain in that position. You want others to come along. And, and hopefully by looking at someone, hearing their voice, seeing that they're human and that they you know, some people can look one way or the other way, but they kind of look a little bit like me. Hopefully that does help to cause people to know, to, to develop the confidence that they too will be here. So no, I, I definitely agree. Yeah, no, exactly. I think if you think about, if we're looking at, if, if we want to change diversity in STEM, um, visibility of of women like yourself, but also for me, I mean, I keep telling everywhere I go is where I tell people about you all the time, and that's also because of um, the humility that you have. Is that if somebody the first time when I, I spoke to you, I was just just gobsmacked about how approachable, how kind, and how gracious you 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 are. And, and, and also the willingness to send down the ladder for somebody like me to be able to climb and the accessibility that you have, me being in South Africa and you leading one of the, the biggest engineering, I mean, engineering companies in, in, in the world really, as a black woman, it's just inspiring. And it also, you know, for me, it inspires me to make sure that I can also do what you are doing for me, what you've done and making sure that the ladder always is always behind me and everybody you know, that the generation coming after me can climb as well. Well, um, thank you so much for your kind words, but I am inspired by you. And I, I want to congratulate you on your award and the, the tremendous work that you're doing. Can you share a bit more about that? Yeah, no, thank you. Um, I'm actually one of the um, the 2020 Sharp, Sharp Foundation Social Innovator of the Year. So that has been really a great surprise and, and, and a great accolade for me that I feel like is also, you know, help helping to open doors, but also making sure that I am visible to a lot of the girls that, you know, that growing up exactly the way, you know, I grew up. 
and making them believe that if they work hard, if they commit one day also, you know, the world can open up for them. So that has really been, um, I'm, I'm really grateful for that, but I still, I'm still more grateful for, you know, having you in my life, so. <laughs> yes, you know, and as women and, and people of color, I think, especially during this time of COVID, I think the impact of COVID has been much stronger on, you know, our demographic. And as, as you know, tying it back to the conversation that we had in the beginning about uh, change and innovation coming from distress, I think we as, as fitting into that group understand how profoundly impacted women and especially women of color have been both in terms of the disease itself, but also due to the fact of what's happened with childcare. And I, I don't wanna call it a burden because children are blessings, not burdens, but it definitely has disrupted careers and, and the, the ability to contribute to the workforce. Um, and it, that may take quite a long time to heal. And given that, you know, I think it's incumbent upon many of us who have not been yet impacted in that way to really try to figure out how to, as quickly as possible, correct that situation. And I, and I know that there is space for more more faces that can provide the solutions and the solving of problems. Um, because I think to your point, Marianne, there's a proximity to those problems. You're able to yeah. understand it because you, you understand the issues and can therefore solve for it in a way that is, um, that has the same kind of intent and, and interest. And I, I wonder if, you know, we have many people listening here who are also inventors, innovators, who are disruptors in their own circles and spaces, is what advice would you give? And, and Lindy Wei, what advice do you give the, the, um, the young women and, 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 um, and men that you work with as well? What advice would you give them? In this point in, you know, with 20, where, what date is it in November of, of, of 2020 and looking forward to the future, what advice would you give them? I think um, you need to ask, I mean, for any career that you are passionate about, you, and you need to study and make sure that you know the people that have paved the way, but, uh, but also understand what they have been through. Because most of the time you so focus on, you know, on, on, on the arrival, like now you can see Marianne being where she is, but the journey is just as important because you know to make sure that you don't have the the kind of unrealistic expectations of what is there but also i mean of what it takes to get there but you know when you have somebody that you look up to maybe sometimes it just help just to reach out to them and say you know what like i've done like you know with marianne and say you know i look up to you i've seen all the work that you're doing you know um i would like to get to know you and and you know most of the time actually you'll find that they will say yes. I mean, the first message I sent to her, she said yes. So I think be um, ask, but work, you know, you need to study. You need to study those people. Be good. You have to be good at what you, at what you want to become. You know, you have to, um, uh, I, I always say the only way to get doors open for you, you just have to be impressive. So work so hard that you can't be ignored. Work so hard that you can't be ignored. That's powerful. Marianne, any advice? I'm sure you have lots, but what would you give yes. advice? Yes, uh, well, Linda Lee said it beautifully, but I, what I would also say too is that um, a lot of invention kind of happens, you know, outside in the world and you're collaborating with others, but the mindset for it is internal to you. And despite whether or not you're accepted or how difficult your life may be, Kind of go inside of yourself and, and find that childlike hope and imagination and just keep that growing and nurture that throughout your life. Um, and don't let that die off as you as you grow older because that's where I think your source of 
change is going to be. Oh, that's phenomenal. So with the, the advice around asking, around stepping into that greatness, um, and also asking the right questions and don't be, and be bold in your ask. I think that's Lindy way you were talking about being extremely bold with your ask and, and stepping in there. And also to keep that childlike intrigue, interest um, in many ways. Um, as you walk through and uh, you know, it's December 31st, um, 2020, and you're looking forward to the, to the next year, um, what gives you hope and what gives you, um, yeah, strength um, to invent and to keep that childlike hope alive? Um, I'll start with you, Marianne, and we may use that as our closing. Um, I would like to hear from you rather than hearing from me. Yeah, I, I feel like <clears throat> when you look at the amount of need there is in the world and, and you forget about your own circumstances, but you get in touch with where the pain points are in the world. That That's what gives me both the motivation to keep going and, and thinking of, of new things that can help, um, but also the, the concern to keep going and the necessity of that, especially pulling other people along so that you leave a pathway once you're, you know, once you leave the earth that other people can step into your place. Thank you for that. Um, Lynn Dewe, as you are looking forward with your, also with your, um, with African teen geeks, um, what are you hopeful for? What gives you the motivation? Um, I think uh, for me, being in education and obviously in Africa is um, just knowing that the small change, no matter how small, you know, um, the, the contributions I'm making, it makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And so even if it just helps one child one day to, you know, end up having the opportunities that I've had. You know, and that all came through education. You know, there was no trust fund. There was, there was really nothing except just working hard and staying in, in, in education. So for me, that's really what I wanna, I wanna try and do and make sure that as many children as possible, they also will get education and so that they can also break the cycle of poverty and disadvantage, not just for themselves, for their families too. Great. Um, I think we've got so much to learn from all of you. And um, I want to thank you. Uh, thank you, Marianne, and thank you, Lindy Wei, um, for in, our, in Yoruba, we usually talk about sorosoke, and you've probably seen that quite a lot, which is to speak up. And I thank you so much for speaking up and speaking such wisdom over the past couple of minutes. And um, at this point, it's we know this um, summit is the pioneers of change. And I'm so honored to have you as, as pioneers of change joining me in this important discussion. Um, and we have, um, and this is also a time for thinking around the social entrepreneurship and why it's so critical to tie that into some of the problem solving and the solving of, of our biggest, wickedest issues um, in the world. And thank you both for joining me for this, for this conversation. Uh, thank you all, um, wherever you are in the world, for joining us. And we hope that you have um, notebooks filled with, with good advice. Thank you.